I'm traveling the USA in my custom Airstream Loretta, searching out investment opportunities amongst the country's most innovative and creative startups. I'm in the Big Apple to meet a new company trying to compete in a highly competitive marketplace. The New York fitness industry is worth in excess of $3 billion. A growing sector in this market is the specialty gym, which focuses on a specific piece of equipment or a single core exercise. The company that I am interested in has taken an age-old Olympic sport and created what it hopes will be the next big trend. Rumble Boxing's reimagination has added high-tech scoreboards and water-filled punch bags to their energetic boxing workouts. Social media is their platform, and their brand is desirable, cool, and street savvy. The opening of new studios and an expanding clothing and product range stand testament to this vision. This growth also provides investment opportunities. So how do they do it? Today's guest, Rumble Boxing's co-founder, Noah Neiman. At the bar. My mom told me don't take drinks from these people <laughs> in oversized no. Winnebago. Is the man to ask. This is bigger than everybody's apartment in New York City combined. <laughs> This seat is very cushy. I could sit <laughs> here way, it's a, much know, it cozier than a cat. Back. It, you know, it's got I, lots of action in it. I get it. Tell me where you want to go. I, I don't know. Where, do you have I, to be we anywhere? Need to end up at NoHo because I have a dog, a beautiful dog. He's actually right there, tatted on my arm, Ozzy, nice. Ozzy. who needs to be walked at some point. No or I'm going to come home to sheets that are covered <laughs> in, in right. protest doo doo. Uh, so we, at right. some point, I got to get down to where our second studio that we ever opened is in NoHo, right. so we can roll by it. We're, we're on our way. Let's we do have, it. So We're here in beautiful Upper East Side, beautiful where we opened our third studio. Amazing. Yeah. So if anyone doesn't know you, is there one story that you think gives insight to kind of who you are and what you're about? Oh, man. People talk about, you know, overnight sensations, 10 year in the making. And I think that my whole life has been culminating to this one moment and what I'm doing now, I just didn't know. I just didn't know. Um, the, the path was kind of definitely windy, definitely rocky. I had some really um, low points, which only empowered me to really be grateful uh, for what I have now and what I'm doing now. So I started out Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, grew up there, went to school at Hofstra in Long Island, uh, moved into the city, got my job as an accountant, which I absolutely hated because <laughs> I, when I grew up, I had ADD diagnosed. I was always bouncing off the walls. I don't know if you could tell, I'm always moving around. Um, and I was just like, this, is, this can't be my purpose. This can't be my path. So after a string of kind of unfortunate family events, um, mm -hmm. I had some sickness in my family. So I moved back to Pittsburgh okay. and I ended up really taking a, a turn for the worse. I got into drugs. I was hanging out with some bad kids. I basically was taking my life for granted. So I promise to never do that again. And what I do now is really paying homage to that every single day. So I got into fitness because somebody I went into college with, this guy, Micah Jesse, I had helped get him in shape in college. I had um, always you know, talked to him about fitness. Fitness was always my passion. I never thought about it as a profession. Um, I think we'd be one of those gym rats that just only worked out. I wanted to have a, a purpose that I thought was bigger. Um, how foolish I was, I didn't realize at the yeah. time. But- um, It could be both. So he took me to this place called Barry's Boot Camp, and they ended up offering me a job. And that was my first foray into, into fitness as yeah. a profession. So I fell in love with group fitness, and I fell in love with training people. If I didn't get the chance to legally ball up my fist and throw it against something, I don't know if I would have been an emotionally stable enough. I wouldn't have had that outlet. This is like the purge, yeah. where for that training session, all violence and hostility is legal. And we're animals. To, so to get that out, again, has always felt, left me very emotionally, emotionally empowered. So that's what it's about for me. It's about letting the energy and trying to contribute that positive energy that makes humanity what it should be. Talk to me about the creation story. How did it come to be? Yeah. 
how this came about was I was starting to build up a name for myself in New York City as the, the premier trainer. My business partner, uh, Eugene Rem, who's the co-founder, who is also the owner of Catch Restaurants, okay. um, one of the, probably the most iconic uh, restaurants sure. in, in the country, um, just got you know purchased by Tillman Fertitta, who is a, a restaurant entrepreneurial genius. Um, and so Eugene approached me and he was an investor in Flywheel and he really wanted to get into fitness. He said, listen, I want my own thing. I want a place where we can go and we can have fun with my friends and I can invite my friends that I would invite out to catch and feel good about working out. Fear stopped me from partnering with him for a year. I originally told him no. I said, listen, I'm very comfortable. I had finally worked my way out of that dumpster where I was just of, of, of lack of money and, and you know avoiding calls from my bank because I was overdraft. And I finally was making a name for myself, so I was afraid to lose that. But fast forward a year of him being pretty resilient and pretty relentless. Um, you know, he Eugene isn't told no often. He's he's a really strong, iconic New York yeah. figurehead. He said, "Listen, I know that you said no, but I want you to meet these two guys. They would be perfect to partner with. This guy Andy comes from you know Cozy Sandwiches. He's a serial entrepreneur. He's a genius. Come to Soho House. You got to meet Anthony DeMarco. He's an Iron Man. He's done like eleven Iron Mans. He's retired. He was a he was a high, uh, higher up at Google pre IPO. So he's a genius operationally. We got all our components, but we don't have that missing link. We don't have the actual fit. We're getting yeah. into fitness. Yeah. We don't have the fitness guy. That's right. So. I was like, oh, this guy, Eugene, man, he is he is really like relentless. So I sat down at Soho House in New York City, right on the, uh, in meatpacking, right around the corner from Catch, right around the corner from M Group offices, that's Eugene, some company that owns Catch. And he introduced me to these two guys. And I was really blown away. A week later, I, you know, signed on and um, became a partner with three of, you know, some of the most brilliant entrepreneurial minds of our of our decade and I think Rumble I really hope there's going to be case studies about it because we really work hard but let's talk about it yeah. um, where is the business now um, and where do you see it kind of in a three to five year period right now we have Rumble boxing that's open that's our four wall studio that's our offline business we have uh, three open in New York City. We have one open in LA right now, so that's our first out of state um, foray. They are number one through four tr most traffic gyms in the country, incredible. which is in an incredibly saturated market. We're gonna have 20 stores open in the next two years. We have about $40 million we're gonna spend, which to even have that, like, I didn't have $40 in my account. <laughs> so to be taught, no, seriously, I, I used you. to have. I'm no, about to no. get a tattoo that says negative 76 on my arm because that was my overdraft at Citibank when I accidentally went over and I couldn't afford food for like two days. That's and a, like an incredible story. Yeah, so to talk about 40 million is like, I'm having like heart flutters right now, palpitations. As you should. So we have Rumble Boxing. Yeah. We just announced Rumble Treadmill, which is another offline um, concept where we're, instead of boxing, we're gonna go back to where I started. We're gonna do treadmills and strength training. So half the class you do treadmills, little short interval runs. Again, make it fun, make it sexy. The studios are beautiful. We got custom curated artwork. We got sterile environments. We got top of the line sound systems. We got a, a front desk staff that war like warmly welcomes you. Everything is just so beautiful. We have two leases already. We're gonna probably open up a, another five or so in the next couple of years of those. Um, now, our biggest announcement, which I haven't even really talked about, we just announced it the other day, is we just partnered with Scooter Braun again, um, who's our main partner, not an investor, he's a main partner and advocate for this, um, the four founders of Rumble Boxing and Techno Gym, which is a yeah. huge, huge um, Italian-based company that has some of the, it's the Ferraris of fitness equipment and we're gonna make a play at home. So we're gonna build up 500 hours of highly, like I'm talking Spielberg style co content, like Hollywood style fitness content that's fun, that's engaging, that makes you feel like you're in, you know, ready player one as opposed to working out. My favorite part. So, yeah? yeah? Good, that's a good reference then. <laughs> Excellent reference. So we're gonna go to the at home marketplace, which then we're international. We can launch everywhere, especially with the power of Techno Gym being our manufacturer and our distributor. Um, we can really bypass a lot of the red tape that our competitors um, have seen into the online marketplace. What year is that? 89. 89. <laughs> what year is that? <laughs> Next time.
right? This is crazy. What we like to do is we focus on fun always. So everything that we develop, whether it's software, whether it's hardware, whether it's an elevation in studio, whether it's a piece of marketing collateral on our Instagram, it's how can we make the consumer have fun, smile, and enjoy. All we want to do is have a positive impact on the people and the customers that honor us with their time, with their money, with, um, you know, with their energy. So that's the play. So we have those three companies. Um, we just hired a new head of retail, this guy Travis. So we're gonna revamp our whole retail because fashion is a huge component as to what we do. It's fashion, it's fitness, it's music. So we got some of the best people in fashion. We got some of the best people in, in music, Scooter Braun and Justin Bieber. And you know, you got that whole contingency of Amazing. people involved. Yeah. And um, fitness, which yeah. is what we do. This sounds like a rocket ship. Um, it sounds like an incredible journey. What have been the biggest challenges uh, that either you've experienced or that lie ahead as it pertains to the business? I mean, honestly, I think the impediment of any business is talent, yeah. talent acquisition. So as we grow, we're fortunate that um, we've raised the money we need to raise. On, on the trainer side, talent? Uh, yeah, or? Every, everything. Uh, anytime you grow, every time you yeah. open up, you, your bandwidth is stressed. That's right. So you gotta increase your bandwidth. So you know you need more trainers because that's what we do. At the end of the day, we deliver highly energetic, fun, that's incredibly right. effective fitness. So if you don't have that conduit, if you don't have that, that person that can articulate the brand, your brand can't grow. So as we kind of open up different studios, as we get into the online, as we get into treadmill, I think talent, whether it's managers in the studio, whether it's coordinators to greet people coming in, whether it's the clean team that keeps the studios pristine, that greets the customers with a smile, every single thing we do at Rumble Boxing is the most important thing that we do at Rumble Boxing. So to keep operating at that level, it just takes a lot of energy. Yeah. So I mean, that's the hardest thing is to, is to really wake up every day and be well rested and, and be able to put forth that energy necessary to grow what I hope will become known as one of the most powerful, impactful brands of our modern time. How do you judge success, uh, your personal success? I judge success by how I affect other people. So. The money is great, don't get it wrong. I, I never want to ever have to put food back at Key Foods in LES because I couldn't afford that piece of chicken. I never want to do that and I want to make a name for myself and I, 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 so that's the personal goals. But on kind of the much more important kind of existential metaphysical realm, I want what I do to have a positive impact so that even if it's just a smile, you see me or you, you, maybe you don't even realize it, but you work that little bit harder because of something you heard me say or yeah. that's what I want. I want to have a positive impact. I never want anybody to look at me and be like, yo, that kid's not for real. He's not, he's negative. He's not, he's not a, a, a strong, impactful person. That's it. Positive impact only. Because if you take that Steve Jobs approach and focus on the product and not the profit, the profit comes. The product has to be so strong that people want to have it. They want to interact with it. They want to adopt it in part, as part of their life and their lifestyle. And I want to do that in positive ways. I, I love it. Well, Noah, this has been incredible. I don't want to take you too far out of your way on your journey. No, it's all good. Uh, we we're, we're at Fifth Avenue. Fifth Avenue, 34th and Street. 34th Street. We did a whole interview and we only made it about five streets. <laughs> but, I'm getting out. Yeah. Bye. You're the best, brother. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. Thank Amazing. you for letting me tell now, this. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. So you started with the restaurant. Our slogan is get back to human. It's about transparency, knowing what you're eating. If you had asked me, do you think you'll be an entrepreneur one day? No way. And now you're a consumer product company. We are the fastest growing chocolate company in the United States right now. 